All right, folks, so we're just going to go to it, and I'll, I'll follow you on this first one just for the camera's benefit. Um, so these are models. They're unfortunately not anatomically perfect. Rich Levitan is developing anatomically perfect ones. But uh, grip the alleged thyroid with your thumb and middle finger. And now your index finger should be able to feel a membrane uh, with the same hand as you're gripping. Yep, we all feel that? Yeah. All right, now. There you go, exactly. Absolutely. Now, you're on the patient's, uh, the same side of the patient as your dominant hand is the easiest way to go. So I'm a righty, so I'm always on the patient's right, just mm -hmm. as I am now. If you need to, flip around your model so you're on the side you want to be. And now, be generous with your incision. The less you could palpate the membrane, we're going to get you the scalpel in a sec, the more generous your incision. So I will always make at least an inch, inch and a half. Mm -hmm. And anyone, even if I could feel the anatomy beautifully, um, and if I can't feel the anatomy, that incision just keeps getting bigger and bigger until I can feel something. And if you need to, you just get in there and spread the hell out of all that fat. You can't, like, as Richard showed you, you can't screw up anything as long as you're in the midline. Then I refeel the membrane, and now I use a two pass of the scalpel horizontally. Once towards me, flip within the wound. That's why I like an 11 blade. Push away, and now I've just felt the back of the cricoid. At that point, I can't screw this up because I'm going to... Now take the bougie and run it along my finger. I feel that bougie and my finger in the same space. It can't be anywhere else. And at that point, oh, I don't even need to get hold up now because I felt it past my finger, but why not? Okay, I hit a stop point. You can't screw it up now. So now you could take your ET or your trach and it can't go anywhere else. It can't, no matter how hard you push, it can't go into the soft tissues in the neck. Just past the cuff. That's all you need. If you go any further than that, you will uh, be in the right main stem. So as soon as that cuff disappears, you stop, confirm with that title, and you are golden. So when I feel my membrane is so small, it doesn't feel like my finger would fit through. Does yeah. it, Your finger just, will definitively yeah. fit okay. through. On uh, the people with those big, fat fingers, you know, sometimes you see, like, the proctologist, when we used to have them, they, for some reason, have these fingers the size of sausages. On them, I'd recommend their pinky, but on, on normal size adults like all of us, your index finger absolutely will fit. And when you look at, you know, the size of the tubes we're putting in there, if you can get your index finger in, the tube will go in like butter because we're actually dilating quite nicely, which is why I like sticking that finger in there. Now, on peds, which I don't do, you probably won't be able to fit an index finger. You might have to use that pinky instead. All right, guys, go to it. Yeah. 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 If you could feel your finger, then it doesn't matter. It was big enough. It's only when you can't find the anatomy. So then, oh, yeah. finger it now. You wait until yeah. you've done I, I put my finger in to feel the membrane again. That's okay. my complication. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> and then I make my horizontal incision. Now, you see, you have your hand in the air, which is fine, oh, yeah, but yeah, 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 your hand's yeah. going to be shaking. Yeah, no, so, yeah, yeah, having your hand down on that patient. Yeah. So, so the way I do it is, yeah. Right. Yeah. so that's my vertical, yeah. flip around like this, away, so this is just flip down to towards, and all that time my hypothenar is on the patient. Oh, just like, I now can't imagine doing anything with a scalpel where I'm not touching the patient. This is what you learn when you train with surgeons. So they're always going to be it. So I just hold it like a pencil and now I have is up here, insanely isn't it? precise be, control. Just, but uh, if you're used to yeah, holding no, with a different grip, it becomes quite tough. Yeah. So it's so just flat, a matter yeah. of getting yeah. used to always having your, your yeah, hand right. in contact with the patient. Gotcha. Do you find sometimes with your initial incision you actually go through the cracks? You can. Um, but because it's vertical, um, it shouldn't get through entirely. Shouldn't. I mean, if it does, it's absolutely fine, but it just yeah. usually doesn't happen that way with a vertical incision. Yeah, okay. But you can't mess stuff up with your fingers. It's very difficult to cause any damage with fingers. Yeah. Yeah. So you yeah. just get in there. Sometimes you got to push fat, push fat, push fat. Yeah. And what I need you guys to understand is this is blind. From the initial vertical incision, do not expect to see anything. This is where your eyes are. So once that initial incision's made, it's going to bleed. 
Not in a way that's going to cause any damage to the patient, but it's going to bleed such that you no longer can see the cricothyroid membrane. That's not going to be part of this. If you're conditioning yourself to look, you're hosed. The key is, once you made that vertical incision, everything becomes infinitely palpable. You'll have no problem palpating, but if you expect to see anything, that's not going to happen. So what you need to train to do, and this is the way to train, you just make one of these at home and you do this a couple thousand times, is you need to train yourself so that you could put your scalpel where your finger is, right? So, because you're going to take your finger away because you don't want to cut it. Yeah, yeah. So you have to be able to imagine, my finger was here, so here's where I'm going to cut. My finger was here, so here's where I'm going to cut. And you have a, a, a margin of error because the membrane is this big. So if you had your finger here, and you cut here, it's not a problem. Um, but you can't really, if you gently cut, you can't cut through the cricoid cartilage. You can't cut gently through thyroid cartilage. Meaning you're gonna eventually make small movements of your scalpel until it pops in. And that's the other beauty of the 11 blade, is it gives you plunge confirmation. You know, like, oh, where the hell did that go? Oh, there it is. <laughs> you know, so you're gonna know. And you always, you always there's nothing you could cut. Richard's slide showed there's nothing bad you could cut in that area. So you could accidentally stab through, you're not gonna cut through the back wall of the cricoid. I mean, you can if you do that, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about, you know, oh, oh, what did I do? No, you're gonna be fine. You're not gonna cut through esophagus. That's why this structure was almost created by whoever designed us to be intended for airway management. It's beautiful. And you always feed the bougie over the pan aspect of yeah. I that's just naturally where I am. If I'm on the yeah. patient's right I mean, side with this yeah. finger, then it is that tactile portion of your finger. Now if you're coming in from the other side, the side I don't recommend, um, then things are tougher. But so you always feel Yeah, so I always I will deliberately change sides if I went to the wrong one because everything becomes easier when you're on the patient's dominant side. Yeah,